This podcast is brought to you by Savage Arms. They just introduced their first straight pull rifle, the Impulse. Straight pull is a pretty cool deal. It's a little bit different than a conventional bolt gun where the bolt, instead of going up and then back, you just straight pull it back to the rear, push it forward. So it's super fast. It's popular a lot of places around the world, but the fact that Savage is doing it is pretty cool. And it also includes their AccuStock, their AccuFit, their AccuTrigger. So a lot of those features on Savage guns that you've come to know and love. Um, it's available in a big game version, a predator version, and a hog hunter version. So check it out. New gun from Savage, savagearms.com. It's the Savage Arms Impulse. Also, this podcast is brought to you by Gundelio, gundelio.com and the smartphone app, Gundelio. Download the smartphone app, free for your phone. You'll get notifications about deals on guns, ammo, and then also podcast stuff, video stuff. So a lot of good content there, but also deals to be had. And also we can send you messages when you walk into a gun store, give you a heads up about new products or deals going on. And then gundelio.com, it's kind of the sister site for it. And uh, another place where you can find ammo in stock and deals galore. So check that out. Hey, welcome to Gun Talk Nation and happy new year. We're back. Um, Yes, this is going to be a good year, I think. Today on Gun Talk Nation, we have a guy from a company you probably know. Um, the world of AR-15s has grown and morphed over the last decade or, or decade and a half. And one of the things that we're seeing a lot of is the growth in interest in building your own AR. Because this is something, believe it or not, you can do it. I promise. We're here to help. Well, not me. But Arrow Precision, Brian Deal with Arrow. Welcome in, man. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate you guys having me on. So, you know, for those who don't know, I always like to start here. Um, explain Arrow Precision and how do you describe it to somebody? <laughs> uh, well, we, we like to think we're, uh, you know, a premier AR manufacturer for, for the at-home builder um, that uh, has value in mind. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, our, our history is in manufacturing. Um, we are a true, you know, American manufacturing company uh, started in a garage, uh, ground up story, and uh, we hold those values dear to us where, where we came from and what we do. So, uh, um, yeah. Well, I think that um, when people think of Arrow, it's kind of like, are they a gun company? Well, yeah. Make uh, we, You do sell complete guns and primarily, like you said, on the AR-15 side of things, AR-15, AR-10, everything I guess under that umbrella, mm -hmm. um, but but you're really known for the builder crowd. And what is the appeal, and why why do you think there's a growth in building your own AR? I think there's a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, uh, versatility in, in in what you can build. There's a lot of companies out there making a lot of different accessories and a lot of different parts right now. And uh, you know, the bread and butter. Uh, area of the AR is where we play in and that's your, you know, upper and lower receiver and your hand guard. Yeah. Um, you know, those are, those are the parts that we, we manufacture, uh, very, very well and, and, and in bulk. Uh, and we, we hope anybody that builds an AR off of our, uh, off of our brand, you know, uses our upper, lower and hand guard. But aside from that, when you open it up into the different parts and accessories that you might want to use, uh, whether it's just your your stock and your grip or your barrel or your bolt carrier group or anything else, there's a lot of different options that, that you can go down, a lot of different paths that you can go down. So buying a, a complete AR really locks you into, you know, one specific offering, uh, which that's great too. And for a lot of people that works, Yeah. but for our customer base specifically, a lot of them really like tinkering. It's a hobby. You know, it's a go out and sit in the garage while football's on on Sunday. And, right and hang out for a couple hours and have some me time with something that I like to do. And uh, for a lot of people, that's that's building an AR, customizing it, making sure it's exactly what I want down to every single, you know, screw that's in, in, in the rifle or the pistol that you build. The reason why AR-15 building, um, I guess, is popular and possible is because there is somewhat a standard. I mean, we you probably already heard of mil spec, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, a part is a part. You know, a barrel, a lower, they're pretty much all the same dimensions. So it's, it's sort of a, a Lego situation that you can actually put it together and you can, obviously you guys would say, Hey, 
We'd love it if you'd buy everything from us and buy the build kit and do it all, which it, probably, honestly, for a lot of us, we like that because it's turnkey. Um, but you can Frankenstein something together, and um, it, you don't have to be a gunsmith. I mean, fair to say? Yeah, definitely fair to say. Uh, there's a, there's a, definitely a, a little bit of a learning curve to some of the specific uh, pieces of building an AR, but generally speaking, and, and that's one another reason why this uh, industry or this uh, the builder crowd in the industry has really grown is the resources available uh, to be able to, to learn to do this, whether yeah. it's having a, a friend that's done it and they can help you out or whether it's being able to go online and find videos of how to do X, Y, Z during, during the process. Uh, you know, it's, it's not that challenging. So people can get into it pretty easily. Well, and also thinking about whether it's building it from the ground up or for a lot of us, probably a lot of people listening to this podcast, um, they probably have at least a few ARs and, and it's very possible if they're like me, I'm thinking about some of the stuff I have. It's like, well, I've got stuff that has quad rails and stuff that has a carry handle. And it's like, I liked it 10 years ago, but now that's eh, kind of outdated. It doesn't have the right look or, or now I'm realizing that I don't like holding on to a cheese grater while I'm shooting. <laughs> so now you can kind of take your, your old gun and make it new again. Yep. I mean, what's the trend that you guys are seeing with some of those accessories, hand guards and charging handles and some of that stuff? Well, it's really interesting because uh, you mentioned like the cheese grater hand guard mm -hmm. and a lot of people actually went away from that. Um, talking, you know, five years or so ago that when Keymod and MLock were the new new rave and uh, Keymod, which obviously ha hasn't worked out very well for that specific attachment platform, but MLock kind of took over, slimmer rails were, were all the thing. But now it's switched a little. It's actually harder to get a hold of, you know, quad rails and that style. And a lot of people don't have them now because most people have their M lock kind of slimmer, right. similar de designs. And uh, people are circling back around and you actually wanting that, that stuff that they 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 uh, they couldn't get before. Uh, <laughs> not in masses, but the people that have built a few rifles and want to maybe build another one, they're kind of going towards that that type of stuff. Um, but in general, you know, you're you're absolutely right that people, uh, you know, want to build. Uh, many different forms or fashions of, of the rifle and based on just one component that maybe uh, is a new launch by a company, it could just be a handguard, for instance, they'll, they'll potentially build a whole, whole new AR or might pull something out of the safe and, you know, swamp, swap something off pretty easily as well. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and you even see, it's kind of funny to see it. You see people swinging back to like go old school. Mm -hmm. Or go retro. Retro builds are big right now. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of retro builds going on with our customer base. So, I mean, Brian, for you, obviously, you've been at Arrow for a number of years. I mean, what do you like in an AR? Just because there's so much personal preference and you can customize it for what you want it to be. I mean, what are some of the things that you prefer? Uh, I'm pretty basic. I, I like, a, you know, a pretty slim down build, um, lightweight slimmer handguard design, maneuverable. You know, mm -hmm. I like doing drills and being able to move, move while I'm shooting. Um, so that usually lends towards something that's a little bit lighter weight, yeah. a little bit more maneuverable. So uh, I'm, I'd say I'm, I'm, I'm pretty basic in terms of doing a, you know, a slimmer handguard, a, a 16 inch builds usually what I'm going to shoot. Cause I feel like that's a very effective, uh, length of barrel for, for what most people are trying to accomplish, whether it's close close quarters or out to, you know, 500 yards or, or, yeah. or more. Um, so that's, that's generally what I would have. And that's, you know, if I'm going to recommend a rifle to someone that's trying to buy or build their first AR, it's getting that kind of just 16 inch five, five, six or two, two, three wild build, yep. have that default rifle that you can use in pretty much any application. Uh, make sure once you have that one in the safe that uh, you can, you can explore from there. Now, as far as if someone's listening to go, I've really never attempted a build. Um, I mean, obviously you need all the parts of the gun, but uh, maybe some tools involved. I mean, is, is, what are some of the essentials um, that you'd kind of, if, you're, if your buddy was saying, Brian, what do I need to get started on this? Yeah, for sure. Um, not too much actually. And, and you can get it all in one place. Uh, Brownells is a great place and a great company that we work with that, that has all the tools you might need. But really, uh, you know, you need a, uh, uh, a armor's wrench of some form. Um, a lot there's a lot of good options out there, but a good armor's wrench will do most of the things you need in terms of being able to tighten things down as you go. Uh, you'll need some way to mount your upper, which is a lot of the thing. Uh, one of the pieces that a lot of people don't have is when you're needing to torque down your barrel, 
you need some way to be able to safely hold that. And we see a lot of customers who try and make something work, try and use a vice to hold it in some right. way. And uh, that can put unnecessary stress on the barrel in areas where you don't want that to happen or on the upper receiver. So um, there's options out there. There's different vice uh, options for locking into the upper uh, takedown and pivot pin holes, or there's uh, something like a Geisley reaction rod that you can use. You know, so that's one key piece that you you would need if you're going to do this regularly. Uh, if not, ask your buddy if he's got one. Uh, and then, you know, something, um, a mag block or something to hold your lower receiver. Uh, if you have a, a vice is a great thing to have, and a lot of people have one just in their garage. So you can put a mag block in your vice and your lower uh, where the magazine goes in. We'll just slide over that, the mag well. Um, and aside from that, you know, you're, that's kind of the base items. It's not, it's not too much. Yeah, it's really not too much. And if, if you're, Probably what's going to happen is you get into it, you do a build, and then you're going to have fun with it, and you get over that first kind of initial, like, oh, my gosh, what am I doing here? And then you're going to want to do another one. I mean, mm-hmm. so whatever you spend in in maybe a setup of some tools and some blocks or whatever, you know, $100 or maybe maybe even less, depending on where you shop for this stuff, then you're set up, you're good to go. But I, I've also heard about, um, you kind of mentioned it, friends sharing some of these tools, right? And I see it in reloading uh, where it's like somebody goes, hey, let's get into reloading. Let's all pitch in. Let's, and maybe it's because we're going to get a progressive because we want to do volume, right? And now we can kind of share the cost of it. Um, same idea with if you're going to do builds like, hey, I want to do a build. I want to do a build too. Well, then maybe you go, I don't know, bigger, right? Yeah. <laughs> you kind of set up the bench and it's a shared thing with your neighbors or whatever that you like. Um, cause it, it's not necessarily, it could be a, a, uh, by yourself thing, but it can be kind of a, a group effort, um, on like, Hey, let's go in and let's get a couple different, uh, barrels or let's build a couple different rifles together. Yeah. And we, we get a lot of customers that do exactly that. It's two people maybe that want to get into it for the first time together and they don't mm-hmm. really know what they're doing. And it's, it's a hobby, right? It's any yeah. hobbies fun. You know, most hobbies that people do are fun to do, uh, with, with a friend. So, uh, we see a lot of people that'll buy, uh, it could be a son and a dad, a dad and his daughter. It could be two buddies, uh, just wanting to build a rifle on the weekend for the first time. Uh, that's a, that's a great way to get into any hobby. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what else is arrow up to that people may not realize you guys do? Oh, I mean, uh, we, we mainly are in the AR space right now. Um, and what we, what we do at the core is, you know, we, we truly are a, a manufacturing company it, itself. Uh, we just happen to be in the firearms industry. And that's not to say that we don't have some really, really uh, knowledgeable firearms people in our in our business, because we absolutely do. Um, but our, our roots really started in manufacturing itself uh, in the aerospace industry. And we just happened to, to eventually move into the firearm space over time as we saw some opportunities to really bring some some things that we, we've we learned in, a, in another industry into the firearms space. So uh, but nowadays, uh, since, since we've shifted out of the fire, uh, out of the aerospace industry into firearms specifically, that's what we do. That's what we do okay. all day, every day. So, uh, you know, I'm sitting in here and we have a few other guys in here and this is what we, we live and breathe, right? We, <laughs> we do yeah. this all day. So, you know, we're doing some new product development behind the scenes right now. We're looking at getting into, uh, some, some new spaces, which I can't necessarily dive into right now. Uh, we will sure. cover a new product here shortly, which people should be aware of, but, Aside from that, there's some new uh, new sections of the industry we're looking to get into that we're we're really excited about uh, developing some new products for. Um, uh, but that's what we do. We make, we make gun parts, and that's what we do all day, every day. I want to go back to something you talked about is being a manufacturer and your background in the aerospace world because you guys are up in the Pacific Northwest, and obviously that's one of the big hubs for aerospace technology and manufacturing and all that stuff. Um, there are I don't know how you probably better know than I would a couple hundred AR manufacturers. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm doing air quotes if you're listening to this. Um, and Aero Precision has done a great job of doing the e-com um, and, and creating these builder kits and uh, very out there online with, you know, encouraging people to come check you out and, and buy. But I was, we were kind of saying before we started this, it's like, to me, I think people need to understand that, yes, Arrow makes this stuff, and you go, that's neat, it's tan. <laughs> but 
there's more to it than that. There's more to it than email marketing. And I kind of want to dive into what you were kind of talking about before we jumped on here is the engineering part of this and the emphasis on quality. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, obviously one of the, one of the key focuses for our business is uh, quality control. And, and especially if you're playing in the builder market where people, uh, you know, if we make a rifle at the, at our facilities, we can test fire it on site there. I can make sure that when it lands at your doorstep, uh, it's going to be ready to to fire. Well, it won't land at your doorstep. Obviously, it'll go to your dealer first. But <laughs> sure, uh, sure. once you get it home, you know that it's just going to work, right? And uh, that's that's not hard to support because I can test that. But on the builder side, uh, it's definitely a lot more challenging when you're making a part, even though there's specifications that we're working towards and everything, it's more challenging to just be sure that when someone puts that together, because they are a part of the factor as well, the individual, <laughs> yeah. uh, that when they put the rifle together, it's uh, it's going to function. Right. And then uh, obviously you have to be able to support that on the other side as well. So we, we focus very, very much so on, on quality control to make sure that it's a good looking part and a good functioning part, you know, mill spec, and I'll use air quotes now, mill spec. Right. Um, is great, but mil spec isn't, uh, you know, we're striving for much, much better than mil spec when it comes to our specifications that we hold in our quality control. Uh, mil spec is still, still leaves a little bit of wiggle room that we're not comfortable with. So we, we try to sure. do better than that even, or we do better than that. Well, that's a good point because, and you do offer fully built guns, right? Uh, actually, generally speaking, we don't have those available on our website because, and especially in these times right now, okay, right now it's there's tough no to inventory to be able to support full rifles and, and, and our supply chain, meaning our dealers that we sell to our resellers there, a lot of them are parts companies. So gotcha. our inventory goes to support that, uh, at this current time. But with that being said, you can buy a complete upper on our website and a complete lower separately. And you can very quickly, if you're not comfortable with the whole build process, you can very quickly, without those tools we talked about, get from uh, parts to a complete rifle. <laughs> you too can be a builder with just pushing two pins together. <laughs> now I built this gun. Um, but I guess what I was starting to get at is it's a great point to say, yeah, if if, if you send a, a gun out there, um, you you have all the control. But now you're saying thousands of people, here, you can build this. And you yeah. there's a little loss of control there. Obviously, for the most part, these guys who and, and gals who are building these ARs, they don't do it every day. And it's and you're trying to idiot proof, but and, and that's no, you know, hey, I, I'm included in the idiots. Um, you know, <laughs> idiot, the, the problem with idiot proofing is they keep making better idiots every day. Yeah. So um, <laughs> and stay it, in front of them. Yeah, you got to stay in front of it. You know, <laughs> we want to. We would find the the most you know idiot, and we, maybe it's me actually. Uh, I could be your idiot tester. Can, can Ryan actually build this gun? That's the and then uh, and then if if I could do it, then anybody could do it probably. Well, but it's kind of like uh, you know hackers and viruses and everything. The computer manufacturers and software engineers are always trying to stay in front of them, and they actually will hire them in sometimes to be able to develop yes. better better uh, computer technology. You know, it's kind of like that. We learn a lot from our customers. Every now and then, even though we've made, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of, of parts over the years, if not millions, I don't even know at this point, but uh, things will creep up every now and then. Someone will have some, a very basic build and they'll have a problem that has never been seen in the history of our company right. or nothing you can find online. And uh, those, those things still exist out there that you have to somehow try and solve for. And when those things pop up, you go, okay, how, how likely is it this could happen to someone else and how would we solve for it? And that's part of your ongoing product development is really your customer base and using the products. So I think about, so my mom was taking, she took a, a pistol class from Clint Smith mm -hmm. and, and then she was taking another class and she had taken this, this like three day class from Clint Smith and was proficient with her, her pistol and all that stuff. And then she was taking, she was out at the range with my dad and she was kind of, her shots were on target, but they were kind of all over the place. And uh, my dad's going, well, you know, are, are you focusing on the front sight? And she goes, yeah. And she points to the rear sight. And he's like, no, no, the front sight. She goes, <laughs> well, this is the front sight. It's front to me. Yep. And it's you're like, oh. So it's, it's the same thing, right? So what you need to do is you need to get a bunch of uh, – a bunch of moms who've never built an AR before. And that could be your, your test bed, yeah. you know, of like, can they do it? 
and and how, and and also what are the the common you know screw ups because we're we're in this industry we're so guilty of lingo right we're so guilty of that mm -hmm. and we just kind of gloss over um well you know you just it's the detent pen and this and that and it's like whoa whoa I have a question yeah <laughs> yeah there's a huge expectation uh, that you'll just know a certain certain piece of what you're doing. Uh, we really try and break that down. We've tried to add videos to our website, a lot of knowledge out there that just really gets down into the very basic items that, that some people might not know. Yeah. And we're, we're in a very unique time right now specifically, and we should all be very thankful for this, but there's a lot of new gun owners yep. based on a lot of things that have happened in, uh, well, it's 2021 now, so last year. Right. Weird, weird to think that, 2020. Um, but all these new gun owners, uh, the good side is we have we have a lot of people that, that are gun owners that weren't before and they're understanding what it means to own a gun and be a gun owner. Uh, the challenging side is supporting all of them from a builder perspective. Yep. If they're just going and buying a handgun, that's one thing, buying their first, you know, handgun. But a lot of these people are wanting to get into building their first AR as their first gun ever. Right. Um, so now <laughs> you you've you've really, really got into that crowd of uh you know, people that don't know <laughs> what they're doing. And it's so you, you just got your, your great test bed of thousands of people. Yeah. <laughs> so have, yes, we have. <laughs> what, uh, are there anything that come to mind when you think about, cause I was going to ask you just exactly that question. Um, millions of people bought their first gun in the past year, uh, more than ever. And obviously you guys have probably gotten a few of those folks. Um, yep. uh, more than a few. What feedback have you gotten from these first time gun buyers, first time gun builders? Are, are there any, new feedback because probably in years past there was always somebody who was new to it maybe but maybe they had a background in guns a little bit or they, they had at least owned an ar-15 before and now they're attempting a build but like you said there are people buying a build kit that have never owned a gun right i mean what are some of the things that you're hearing from customers right now with that uh i mean some of the most challenging things are just uh, a lot of people don't f first understand what is compatible with what they don't realize that even in like a buffer kit that there's a different spring that may look the exact same that will function in, in, you know, a rifle length, but won't function in a, in a carbine length. System. And they're going, wait a minute, these are all rifles. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's rifle, exactly. Right? And that you talk about that lingo, you know, mm -hmm. you get into weird things like talking about a carbine length barrel and then a carbine length um, buffer system, which people think, you know, are correlated in some form or fashion when truly, you know, they really, really aren't very much. It's <laughs> so, not confusing at all. Uh, so you get, you get those types of people that just, uh, that lingo you talked about is, is kind of a hurdle for them right out of the gate. Um, but aside from that, you know, we've, we've had very good luck with the new customers. And uh, that's one thing we really pride ourselves in is, is that, you know, as long as you have the know-how, the physical know-how to be able to actually put the rifle together, that there shouldn't be any challenge with our parts working for, for whatever the customer wants to use it for. Uh, one challenge that we do run into frequently, which we talked to when we were uh, talking before we hopped on here, is the the M5, which is our our variation of the AR10 308 LR308 platform. Right. However, you want to talk about it, our M5 platform is it's more finicky, so it's it's more challenging to support that because when you get into that platform, you get into more challenges with well, it's not just uh, the configuration you have, but it's what ammo you're using. Because uh, AR-15, the nice thing is, is it'll generally chew through, as long as you have a pretty basic build, Yeah, it'll chew through pretty much any anything you put through it. A 6.5 Creedmoor or a 308 build is is not nearly the same. You find that to be true for most AR-10 builds? Uh, yeah, definitely do. Yeah. Uh, usually people, and uh, a lot of people have been building 6.5 Creedmoor over the past several years um, as just another variation that, you know, maybe they've built a couple AR-15s mm -hmm. and they built a 308 and that's kind of a new, uh, not a new thing you can do, but it's kind of the next evolution of, you know, building a different caliber. And that one's been, been a lot more challenging to support. Um, and, and this kind of gets into actually a point that I would make for anything you're going to build. You know, we get a lot of customers and it's fun to watch the new, new customers because a lot of them, uh, they do a lot of research, which is great, but it can also be a problem sometimes. <laughs> Um, and they'll, well, they'll everything say, on the internet is true, bro. <laughs> everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, you get people that, uh, they want to build something fancy right out the gate. So they're going to go and they're going to, you know, they'll call and say, I'm having an issue uh, with my rifle cycling or whatever it might be. And you go, Oh, well, well, what is it? And they'll say, you know, this is my first AR 15. It's got this fancy, you know, buffer system in it. It's got this adjustable gas block on it with this, you know, custom ported barrel mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. And, and I'm shooting it for the first time and it's not working, right? Yeah. So one thing we, you know, I would always personally recommend is start with kind of the base build of put a regular gas block on there, a regular buffer system in there and make sure 
it functions. Right. Because when you have 10 different custom components in there that are really unique uh, and all kind of solve different problems, you have a lot of variables when all of a sudden your rifle doesn't work and you really need to eliminate one variable at a time. It gets really challenging to figure out what your issue may be. So if you don't know what you're trying to solve for with each one of those variables, kind of start base and then add them one by one and make sure that it's going to function for your needs. Yeah. Don't, don't build the Shelby Cobra with the nitrous system built in as your first time doing any type of a right. car mechanic stuff. Um, so I wanted, and we're going to do a hot swap here because we've got a team of people from Arrow here today and you guys have something new to talk about. Yeah, we do. So, uh, you know, we talked about a couple of our platforms that we've been into for a little while here, which would be our AR-15 platform items and uh, our M5 platform items. But uh, we've also been uh, developing products to get into the PCC market, uh, specifically our EPC, which is our enhanced pistol caliber uh, product line, which covers, you know, your 9 mil and 40 caliber and then 10 mil and 45 caliber offerings is something we're, we're coming to market with here. Um, as we sit here, it's very, very shortly in front of us. Um, and we're, we're super excited about that. It gives people just a, another option. It gives them, uh, you know, gets us in the space where a lot of people are trending towards those types of builds in the AR market and they want to build with aero parts. And uh, we're really going to approach that the same way we do with our AR-15 and M5 platform parts is that you can kind of customize and build from the ground up how you want it. You can use our parts. Uh, they should be, you know, I'm going to uh, say uh, with a disclaimer, you know, should be use, uh, u- usable with other companies' parts sure. that are in that same space, depending. It's a little different than the AR-15 plat- platform, but I'm sure Jeff will get into that here in a few minutes. Um, yeah, let's bring but- Jeff in I'm, and we'll, we'll swap him out because I know Jeff is a product guru guy. and We'll talk about the new PCC. Jeff, welcome in, man. Thanks for having me. All right. So we hot swapped you out here. Um, tell the people, what do you do at Arrow? What's your position? Yeah. So um, I'm the product manager at Arrow Precision. So I'm responsible for um, obviously uh, building up our current product lines, making sure that we're doing continuous improvements on those product lines, but also responsible for all the new product lines um, related to uh, specifically for this project here, the EPC uh, so any pistol caliber support. So you get like the that. credit or the blame for all the new stuff. Uh, <laughs> relatively speaking, sure, yeah. <laughs> um, so, all right, let's 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 just jump in. I mean, what do we have here? EPC. Yeah, so right here, as Brian mentioned, EPC, the enhanced pistol caliber. Um, this is the EPC 9, which would cover your 9 millimeter and 40 cal. Okay. Um, at launch, we're uh, strictly at 9 millimeter. Um, okay. But we have various different lengths of barrels, uh, so five and a half inch barrels, uh, eight point three on eleven inch barrel and a sixteen. Uh, so that's our barrel product lineup. Um, and then there's obviously various handguard lengths that go with that. And if anybody's familiar with our handguard system, so you have your Atlas uh, S one, which is our slim version, so mm-hmm. it doesn't have the top rail on top. And then there's the Atlas R one, which has the full uh, continuous top rail, which you see here on this one. So. If people are listening to this and, and this is going to be, um, first available as a builder set or, um, so the, the, the initial launch just, I mean, with 2020 and how everything's gone, sure. we've had to pair it back versus what we wanted to do originally. Um, it will be available in receiver sets. So upper and lower, and okay. then there will be some complete uppers, uh, at launch. Okay. Um, so. Okay. Um, so if people are thinking about doing this and they haven't done it before, I mean, what works for them on a, as far as the parts and everything else on a PCC versus what is kind of new for you guys? I mean, if they're going, well, okay, I want to, I want to build this or put this together or whatever, you know, hand guards, uh, interchangeable with everything else, obviously. So you're asking for basically your, yeah, like, your nine millimeter versus AR-15 sh- intercompatibility. Sure, absolutely. absolutely. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, what, what you're going to see here on this platform is, is most of your lower parts kit pieces will work here. We have a couple different things like hardened trigger and hammer pins and things like that in the, in the kit specifically that come with the lower parts kits. Um, but in terms of things that it will be directly compatible between um, you know, your standard AR-15 and the EPC is going to be your buffer tubes, um, any stock stuff, uh, grips, obviously, uh, and hand guards basically is going to be the inner compatibility and then some of the small parts and components. So your safeties, your um, trigger components um, with a caveat on that. 
is that some of the trigger components, just due to the nature of the direct blowback system, it's mm-hmm. a little bit rougher on the trigger components. Okay. And so um, you have to be a little bit more choosy in terms of your aftermarket triggers that you may select. Some of them are not compatible with, um, you know, the forces that are uh, inherent to the system. Now, the EPC has been a long time coming. We've actually, I think we were discussing it at SHOT Show 2020, yes. right? Yeah, we had so. A- interview with Kevin there talking <laughs> so, about it. So we're, we're, you know, it's been a, uh, people have known about it. They know it was kind of out there, right. But not available yet um, for, for a year or so. Um, so I'm just, I mean, run, if somebody says, well, what is it? What, tell me all about it. I mean, what, what do I need to know? I mean, we're nine and 40 to start. Um, we talked about barrel lengths. Um, talk about, uh, you said dr- direct uh, blowback. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Talk, talk about that. So, um, you know, just to compare for people that may not know, um, your AR-15 runs on a direct impingement system, at least the ones that we make. Um, so you have a gas port in your barrel that cycles gas up into back into the receiver, the bolt carrier group. That gas charge, um, you know, drives the bolt carrier backwards right. and cycles the weapon. Uh, now for this system, there is no um, port in your barrel. Um, so all of the force from the detonation of the round inside of the chamber, all of that gas pressure is directed directly back, hence the direct blowback name. And so you have the entire gas pressure versus a metered gas pressure um, that's driving the bolt backwards. That's where you get a lot of a, a little bit more of the force there mm-hmm. uh, in the system. So that's the main difference between your AR-15 and the your nine millimeter direct blowback style rifles in terms of how they function. What, what are they going to notice in shooting it uh, in the different field between the two systems? I mean, obviously this is a nine, right? So obviously there's going to be some difference there. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things uh, with the direct blowback, some of the things that you have to do because you're getting the full force of the, you know, the gas pressure, right? Um, you, there's more added weight to the bolt system here. So the bolt's going to be heavier. Slow it down. Yep. You got to slow it down. Yep. Um, and, al- and allow some of the gas to dwell in there to push the round out. Cause if, if, you know, obviously you rely on that pressure, right. To get the round out at whatever velocities, um, with the added weight there, uh, you have, you know, more reciprocating mass. So the recoil is going to feel more violent per se than, um, an air 15 probably does for most people. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do to tame that playing around with buffer weights and things like that. And in our development for what we wanted to offer for people, um, we settled on a seven and a half ounce buffer, which is significantly heavier than your three ounce standard AR-15 right. carbine buffer. Yeah, double. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then with some of the heavier weights, you know, we've uh, we also have another kit that doesn't actually function with um, your nine millimeter, but for the ten millimeter ten millimeter development. Um, we went with stronger or stiffer spring tensions to help with that. But so we didn't have to increase the weight of the buffer system to tame the recoil because every time you add weight, you get a more hoppy recoil. You, you get more felt recoil. Sure. There's just, there's more mass going back and forth. Yep. Now, now that we, we kind of had teased the 10, the 10's not out yet. Sure. So everybody calm down yeah. and you know, you're not going to find it on Arrow's site quite yet, probably. Um, what is the challenge? Because, you know, a year in the making, I, I know that some people will go, I don't get it. Just just put a nine millimeter barrel on your dang gun and let's get this thing out there. What is the challenge? And obviously you guys know how to make ARs mm-hmm. uh, to me. OK, now this one's in nine. Well, how is it that much different for people who may not be familiar with it? Sure. So, I mean, obviously some of the challenges were logistical in this year in terms of why it's taken so well, long sure. to get to market. Nothing's available. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, with that said, you know, there, uh, you guys alluded to it a little bit earlier with the 308 platform. There's not a standard when it comes to 9 millimeter direct blowback. It's not like an AR-15 where everything should reasonably work uh, right. together. You can say for the most part, that things should be compatible. But until you put them together and test it, you don't really know. Um, And so we tried to, as with all of our products, um, our goal is to be as compatible as possible. So some of it is, you know, that testing with other systems um, and then just throwing other configurations that uh, our customers are known to do 
um, onto the system. <laughs> well, it's like we were talking about, right? So you guys are primarily, you're trying to uh, create this for the builders. Sure. And um, it's kind of like the, the cows getting out in the barn. You know, mm-hmm. once they're out there in the wild, who knows what people are going to do with it. And it'd be one thing if you said, here's the EPC, here is the gun, we will send it to your FFL, and, you know, you, you just load up a mag and go. Yep. But what you're saying is, here, here are, you know, there's an upper, there's a lower, there's all these parts. And instead of just saying, just buy it all from us, which would be great and probably preferable, mm-hmm. you know that people are going to go all over the place, you know, mm-hmm. Brownells or wherever, and, and buy a bunch of different stuff. And oh, yeah. so, I mean, how much testing, and you're getting, you're getting all these different parts from other people in to try to make sure, at least attempt to make it uh, compatible. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of effort that goes into that process, obviously, but at, at the end of the day, it, for a builder focused market, um, you know, like, like you had just mentioned, sorry, the, um, if, if, if we sold this as a complete firearm, uh, you're paying for the privilege of us making sure that it works for you. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, essentially. Um, but because of how we run our business and, and focus on our, cu- our core customer, which is that builder, um, we have to do some of that legwork to try and make sure that we can at least provide uh, a nice runway at, at the start for somebody to get a you know a good trajectory on their build and make sure that it works for them. Right. So make it easy. Yeah. Uh, we didn't talk about mags yet. Uh, let's talk about magazines sure. in this gun. Um, standard Glock magazine. So a okay. Glock 17 magazine um, and anything extended past that will work uh, on the nine millimeters. Okay. Um, Dumb question. Glock 19 mags, the shorter mags, does those work in here? Um, I believe it's pretty close. I'd have to double check. Okay. Uh, I, I'm spacing on that right now. I don't okay. want to say something incorrect here. And you mentioned this is this platform, the EPC-9, could also be done in a 40. Is that right? Uh, yeah. So um, it would just be a, um, a BCG and a barrel swap. Okay. Um, and there's companies out there that have um, your 40... BCG, which is also uh, coincidentally the same thing as a 10 mm. millimeter. Um, that BCG exists on the market and uh, 40 caliber barrels are on the market. Our, our production is going to be mainly focused on the nine millimeter at the start. And we will have those subsequent calibers as we lead into the launch of the EPC line. Cool. Very cool. Um, now I asked Brian this question. I'm going to ask you, Jeff, you guys are a builder company. Mm-hmm. Building ARs is always all about customization and making your your thing. And one of the crazy things about when we get into like building ARs and all the possibilities is all the variety. I mean, what do you like? <laughs> what are your preferences? If if just built and you're going, oh, I hate this type of thing, or I love this type of you know feature on a on an AR. Yeah, I I'm kind of unique in the sense that I'm I really only build a rifle when I have a specific purpose in mind. Um, uh, so one of my hobbies, I, I shoot three gun a lot. So I have an extremely lightweight build, um, that is tuned to the nines. Um, mm-hmm. everyone that shoots, it says it's the flattest shooting, lightest shooting rifle they've ever shot. Um, and I've done that with a, you know, various different parts on the market, but the, the bulk of it is aero precision products. Um, you know, obviously that gets into more things in terms of your accuracy builds. Right. So, um, with a three gun rifle specifically, you know, I have custom hand loads that go with that for yeah, long, long range and course. stuff like that. Well, so. it, one of the funny things is, um, in pretty much most competition when, when, when shooters get into customizing, whether it's a rifle or a pistol or whatever. Um, so my next question on that one is, but does it run? Oh, all the time. Okay. I've, I've never had it go out on me. <laughs> because you see this when you go to matches, yep. it's like, well, I did this to it and that to it and this to it. And they're, they're, they're working out yeah. the problems. Cause a lot of times those guns get weird because they've got too many things going on. Yeah. If I could give anybody, um, some advice there, it's make sure that you kind of vet out the changes before you go to a competition. Yeah. Don't change something and then go to a competition. Yes. I usually try and get at least, you know, 500 to a thousand rounds through something as a cha- as a consistent change before I go and compete with it. Now that said, I'm not some top competitor. I just, I am a competitive person. Right. Um, so I like to make sure that I do as well as possible when I go and have, sure. have fun at these competitions. Yeah. I mean, if, 
I, I know I'm not going to win, but I don't want it to be be because the gun just didn't run that day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Plus, as a representative of the company, how does that look if your gun sure. goes down? <laughs> right. You, yeah, you need you, if you're going to show up in public with uh, a gun you built, it better run. Yeah, absolutely. What are some when people are doing these builds? I know you guys hear from customers all the time. Are there a few common mistakes that people make, or, or you know, a, a few places that they they run into that are that are challenges for them? Um, I mean, there's, there's some pain points. I don't know if there's anything that comes to mind. That's a common reoccurrence of an issue. Um, you know, with some of our muzzle brakes, some people tend to put them on upside down, uh, because the marking is actually supposed to be on the bottom. So if you, um, look at the muzzle brakes, there's porting on the top and that's to keep your muzzle from rising. Right. But Gas coming out. Yeah. Sometimes logically, People think the logo needs to be on top because why wouldn't a company put branding on the top? Well, um, it's functional, right? <laughs> it, it's it's function over form, right? Right. So um, that's something that I've seen a lot over the years. Um, other thing, honestly, is just paying attention to the details and making sure you're using proper torque, um, using Loctite on, uh, you know, temporary Loctite on fasteners that tend to wiggle. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of vibration in these systems and that screws just tend to back out under vibration after a period of time. So, um, you know, our enhanced handguards have screws in them. Um, if you're going to be running your gun super hard, um, that's something that I would recommend is a temporary Loctite or a fiber tight type thing. Yeah. That is, uh, definitely don't go down the scale of like a red Loctite or something. Not, like that, but don't use the red. Pur purple <laughs> purple would be sufficient in terms of just maintaining those things. So just little things like that where people are, you know, in a rush to get the, the build to the range or something mm -hmm. like that. But um, just and when, in the small detail. And when you're at the range shooting and, and things fly off the gun, it's going to be hard to find them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's never easy to dig through the brass and gravel and dirt and whatever other um, environmental challenges right. that you'll face trying to find your detenter. So on the brake, holes go up, gas going up, pushing the gun down. <laughs> it's geometry, yep. physics thing. Um, Jeff, thanks for being with us. So the EPC, um, I mean... It's it's sexy looking. Primarily, this is an audio podcast, but we do have it here. I'll hold it up for you. You know, it looks the part, right? Um, we're going to get to the range. We're going to do some filming with it, and we'll be uh, posting some content with that. But what's not to like? I mean, it's a 9 millimeter. Yeah, it's a 9 millimeter. Are. There's last round bolt hold-open feature built into the upper receiver. Um, That's a big deal. I was, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because I almost forgot to ask you. That is a common deal on the pistol caliber carbines of does it have last round hold open and that was something you guys put quite a bit of effort into right yeah um you know we we went down avenues of various different ideas to implement the system um settled on something um pretty straightforward mm -hmm. uh, in the in the system we wanted it in the upper receiver because there's various different companies that have um, lowers that exist that don't have it built into the lower receiver. So reasonably speaking, and this is a, another one of those standard uh, disclaimers here, <laughs> there's no standard in the system. So it, reasonably speaking, it should work if it runs with a Glock magazine. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's just an impossibility to test every combination out there. But going back to like the whole builder audience, um, not to, don't want the, you this to be missed by anyone listening that mechanism, the last round hold open, is in the upper. Yes. So it would work with, you know, well, again. Feasibly speaking. Yeah. Feasibly speaking, uh, most most lowers, and you're going to perhaps gain a feature that you didn't have otherwise. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I like that. Brilliant. Um, all right, Aero Precision, you know them, you love them. Uh, check them out. The new EPC, uh, available on 9 right now. More stuff coming. Yep. Awesome. As soon as possible. That's it for us. We'll see you next time on Gun Talk Nation.